Joining us on set this morning, Kat Carter. She is the global business development leader attached to Ernst & Young, an international firm with a huge footprint in Trinidad and Tobago. And also Christine Thompson, a director of Yay Entertainment Limited. And if you're wondering what are they responsible for, well, a lot of things, including Chuck E. Cheese, that great entertainment center that we're all enjoying in Trinidad and Tobago. Good morning, ladies. How are you both? Thank you. Very well, thank you. Very good, thanks. Now, Kat, let me start with you. You know, we're looking at the world of finance and we're looking at the investment climate. We're looking at investment and capital. What are some of the things driving investment globally? Yeah, it's a great question because, again, as we think of it holistically, and we're seeing M&A values at levels that we haven't seen since 2007. In fact, through mid-June, we are actually on target globally to, to reach the, the, 90, the 2007 levels for value. Not volume, but in value. And what's really driving that, what we, we do a capital competence barometer survey. So we survey 1,600 CEOs from around the globe. And what they're telling us and what we're hearing from them is that in, the, in recent history, as the economy has been rebounding, there's been the capital and there's been the cash. You know, company has really done a lot to preserve the, ca the cash that's been on their balance sheet. So the cash has been there, the credit's been available in the market, what's been missing is the confidence. And so you've seen a lot of propensity, a lot of pent-up cash with people wanting to do deals. And now the confidence, we're seeing that in the, in the latest survey that we did, which was just published in April of 2015, we're feeling the confidence is back. And so when you combine that with the innovation and disruptive nature that's going on in the global economy, more and more people are actually doing deals. Now, you know, when you talk about disruptive uh, inno and, in and innovation, yeah. it's sort of unplanned serendipity that happens. People just say, you know what, I'm not going to go against the green. But Caribbean people, by nature, when you look at the region, you talk about confidence, you talk about innovation, you talk about disruptive innovation. Confidence is a huge issue. Yeah. And we just spoke to the former Minister of Finance of the Bahamas, and he's talking about the challenges we face as a region, not only size, but sort of still reeling from, from that international global crisis of 2008. In terms of confidence, why is why is that still a challenge in the Caribbean region? I would I would let that in, you have that in question. In terms of you know, do you think that there's there's a confidence <laughs> issue in the Caribbean? You have attached yourself to the Chuck E. Cheese brand. They obviously kind of took a risk coming here. What is it that was so attractive to the region? Um, well, first of all, I think there is a confidence issue in the region. Region, I think culturally, we tend to be a less confident people, maybe because of our size, our history. Um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, we've had economic experiences over the last, you know, certainly three, four years. You look at, at, at uh, Grenada, at Barbados, um, finally, you know, definitely some impact of Trinidad and Tobago because they are our greatest trading partners. Um, that is the CARICOM region. And you do see some economic fallout. Um, However, I mean, I think that we all live here, we make, you know, this our home, and, and you do have to have confidence in the environment going forward and be willing to take risks, because that's what business is about. And, um, you know, I think um, Chuck E. Cheese saw, Trinidad and Tobago is a particularly interesting market because it is, it's large enough that um, there is some critical mass where you can actually, you know, get a return on investment, but it's small enough that it's off the radar screen of a lot of big international players. So we, we tend to have quite a bit of opportunity here from our perspective. Now, your brand is pres uh, the Chuck E. Cheese brand has chosen Trinidad as its first sort of testing ground, if it's yes. right to say that. What has the response been like for the brand? And then where else do you see in the region as the next possible investment? Um, response has been, has exceeded all our expectations, I think. Um, Trinidad and Tobago certainly was sorely lacking in family entertainment options and it, it filled a gap in the market. Um, the brand has, you know, is advertised locally uh, in, in our local cable channels, so there's good awareness and, and we have seen great response. In terms of expansion, I think the best opportunities at the moment are probably Guyana and Suriname just in terms of the size of their economies and what's happening there. Now, in terms of the key investment destinations, Kat, what do you think are the countries you see being key investment points? Yeah, so it's interesting because for a while, you know, the BRIC countries were the hot topic and everybody just wanted to be there yeah. to be there. And what we're seeing now is sort of a return to the developed markets. And so as you look globally, the UK, the US, Germany are three of the, of the top destinations, with China also still being in there. And as, as companies, what we're, we're seeing, even across the regions everywhere, is that people are going outside of their region, right? They're staying close to home. 
they're not necessarily investing domestically, but they're in, in neighboring regions. They are nearby because they're easy to do business. But there's also still now that propensity to go cross-border. So we're seeing more cross-border deals across all the regions. In terms of the emerging markets uh, yeah. and also in the Caribbean, we have unique uh, states. So yeah. Some are, you have Trinidad and Tobago, which is sort of established. You have the Bahamas and the yeah. Caymans, and then you have the other smaller islands, uh, which are still reeling with some of the effects. What are some of the key characteristics of the emerging markets uh, that we have to, to sort of get right before we can yeah, consider so ourselves part of this? I think it's the right targets, sector. right? So what we're seeing is that companies are actually looking, again, not just at where a company's located, but what does that company do and how do they operate? So operational efficiencies are really key. So if you're a business that wants to be acquired or, or invest or grow, you really have to look at your operational platform first to make sure it's rock solid so that you have the foundation to actually expand. And that's what we're seeing. Now, in terms of the sectors that you see in terms of deal makings in 2015, you know, you always have these industries and you see these sectors as, okay, this is where we expect to see huge growth lines for a long time. That has been technology and innovation. Where do you see that growth happening in 2015? Yeah, so for years, we, it was life sciences and technology, right? Those were the, the main sectors. The great news, and great news for this region in particular, I think, is that find all, this, all the sectors are doing business right now. All the sectors are looking at deals. So financial services, oil and gas, things that are near and dear to the heart of this region are, are active again. And again, as we talked about, it's, it's cross-border that they're be becoming very active. And so for me, coming from, I come from the Midwest and in the Americas, and you know, even seeing automotive rebounding is, is a great <coughs> thing for me to hear, right? Because it's, a, it's again, it's across all sectors that we're seeing the activity. But what's really driving it is innovation and technology. So you can, it, you've got to be a niche player in the market, right? You, what is your innovative edge? And that's where companies are looking to be transformative because the companies of today won't be the companies of tomorrow. You know, as John Chambers said recently, uh, the outgoing uh, CEO for Cisco, as he was talking about, you know, 40% of the companies in, in business today probably won't be in business, you know, tomorrow or, or in the years to come. And so you've really got to be innovative and reinvent yourself all the time. And so that's what we're <coughs> seeing is that there, there, while there is still some um, propensity to, to go after your core business and make sure you're expanding your core. You have to do it in an innovative way that gives you a niche product. What are the challenges to innovation? Oh, there are many, <laughs> right? There are many challenges to innovation. Getting it right, are you doing the right thing? Uh, the impacts of the complexity of the environment itself, right? So we see a lot of impacts from the global and economic environments. And, and as, you, as I said, for a long time, people were really scared to do a deal just because nobody wanted to be the first one to do a bad deal. And so the impacts of innovation of where's your, you know, you have to really create demand instead of respond to demand. You have to think about what is the consumer for tomorrow. And that's the, that's the challenge, right, is thinking of who we are, who we're going to be tomorrow. Who are we going to be tomorrow? What are people using your products for? Maybe yeah. you should get a new use of your product. That's always something interesting. Katrin, in terms of the challenges of investing in the Caribbean region, what are some of the challenges in terms of accessing the market and some of the challenges that your company has sort of had to overcome and stick, stick with it to say, you know what, we're going to just kind of make it work? Yeah. Well, in terms of, you know, sort of larger corporate um, sort of activity, like the kind that Kath is talking about, our challenge is always one of size. So, for example, if you're investing in some sort of innovation, you don't have this critical mass to um, basically amortize your investment over. And we don't particularly have um, sources, or the right sources of seed funding and risk capital that can be allocated towards, you know, real, true innovation. We're, ve we're very innovative people, but I think we, we lack some of that infrastructure to make it happen. Um, but as I said, um, challenges, approvals, you know, anything to do with, um, you know, basically government input, um, town and country, uh, fire approvals, all, all these things take a long time, WASA, is an, an always a big challenge. Um, but, you know, you just got to stick through it, work through it, and, and persevere. In terms of capital, <clears throat> we were able to access, um, you know, loan funding. So the capital does exist. We're actually quite a liquid financial services yeah, sector. Um, but we have, our terms are onerous, and they're not particularly competitive. So for example, if I went to sort of raise money in the States, I'd do it on much more favorable terms than we do here, with a lot less security sort of put up. So it's expensive, um, 
but it's there and um, you know I think your business model has to be able to withstand a higher cost structure financially operationally than maybe in other markets and you know you expect that to be a common trend throughout the Caribbean yes I think it's probably worse in other areas of the Caribbean you know because their economies are a little more a little less diversified than ours so yes looking at uh, the challenges we're facing. Now, Kat, back to you in terms of the deal making. Is it, a, is it different in this cycle of the M&A? Yeah, so I've been doing deals since 97. I'm telling you <laughs> age there. <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, Corp you know, either through uh, corporate, the uh, corporate environment and now with EY for the last umpteen years. And it's changed, absolutely. The way that uh, companies are approaching companies, what they're looking at, the way they think of the strategy, the, the chief development officer and their role within the, the company and how they're driving strategy is, is completely changing, right? They're more interdependent and they're more business thinking, right? So rather than the days when people would do deals to do a deal because it was a hot deal environment and, and everybody had sort of deal heat, that's, that's different today. People are being much more strategic in their approach and then in the, in the process itself. So the, the due diligence process, as we call it, from beginning to end, that's, that's changed significantly as well. And in, in the fact that when you think about you know, cyber security and how that plays out not only in the diligence process but on the companies that we're looking at, right, is how secure is their environment. When you think about social media diligence right now, now companies are making more and better informed decisions because they can look more holistically at a, co at a company. And digital and, you know, big data, those have made, had a huge impact on the approach and the process. Absolutely. Now, in terms of the rate hike, U.S. interest rates, and, you know, sort of the investment climate on the whole, let's talk first in the U.S. market and then the effect on economies like ours that, that depend so heavily not only on the U.S. dollar, but trade heavily with the yeah. U.S. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of my friend, my colleagues in our London office always love to speculate on what you know what's the impact of the U.S. rate hikes right. going to have on the ec um, and the economy globally, and you know one of the things I think that we have seen of late is that we'll pr it will probably have it won't derail the upturn that we're seeing, right? So finally, for the first time, I think we've seen small, uh, not maybe not small issues, but global issues that have Im you know impacted one region that have impacted the globe and things have sort of started to stand still and when, when we've had a, a crisis and i think you're not going to see that this time i think if if and when the feds raised the rates i think that'll be much more measured and gradual and that good deals are still going to be able to get done there's still going to be credit that's available might not be at the same rates but you're still going to get a good deal done now you know talking about credit and interest rates and you know for companies that you like what the ones you're involved in the u.s exchange rate and the volatility in the market how has that really impacted operations has it had any impact i think i think the the currency issue is huge um the main issue of course is the lack of availab availability of u.s dollars um which is which is a chronic problem to businesses you know all over the country um and i think that that is a serious threat to you know, the continued operation of business for sure. Um, in terms of, there's a lot of speculation as to what will happen with the exchange rate, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that will negatively impact business as well. Now, you know, when you come to a conference like this, Kat, and you look at the attendees and you look at the agenda, it's a huge packed agenda. What are you hoping people leave here with, with everyone that's attached? You know, I was giving the joke in the opening that, you know, when things do really well, we say good job to the CEO, we say excellent job to the marketing people, and when they go really bad, we look at the finance people, the accountants and the auditors, and we're like, how did you not tell us about this? What do you want people to leave with? This you know, it's morning? interesting because when they kicked it off last night, uh, one of the gentlemen talked about where the bean counters, and he gave several jokes about being accountants and the <laughs> bean counters that we are and what I, I'd really love for people to take away from this right this building and this innovative is that we're more than bean counters right that we should be the strategic business advisors we should be right hand in hand as not just accountants but advisors to our to the corporations that we work with to to those that in our everyday life that if we can think of ourselves differently think of how we approach things differently, we will be, have a greater impact on the greater good for all. What are you hoping people leave with? You know, when you look at the success story of Chuck E. Cheese uh, in a, a, a financial sector like ours that faces unique challenges, but then we talk about the Caribbean where everyone faces a, a unique challenge. What do you want uh, those who are in this industry to leave with and what do you want the public to, to gain from this as well? Well, I think that we are um, not quite in the sort of upturn phase globally. We're lagging. Um, and I think that 
if we sort of leave with the faith, uh, with, with, the, mess, with the, the feeling of really keeping the faith, continuing, having faith, having confidence in our home economies. And I think that, you know, Kath's message about really, I, I think we could use a lot more of relying on the data, relying on, you know, the professional advisors before making, you know, big, significant decisions about the futures of our economies, of our companies. I think that would help all of us as well. You see, in terms of the role of the accountants and the finance people in terms of advising you, do, do you think people really take them, you know, because when Kat says, you know, we should be there, we should be part of that. A lot of CEOs, a lot of CEOs, a lot of these people come and they say, they depend on marketing people they also sometimes depend on gut instinct uh, in terms of the role of the accountants and the finance people how heavily do they roll yeah. <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately I'm a finance person <laughs> so that that's my background as well I'm not an accountant but I'm, I'm, I'm sort of heavily into finance and the truth is I wouldn't go into business if I didn't have that background um, I think it is an extremely important anchor to every single decision that you make and I think the marketing people have great ideas and we need them, but they need to also be sort of somewhat pulled in, restrained by, by the financial perspective. So a very integral part of the team. Understanding the world of finance and understanding the importance of the uh, accountants, the chartered accountants, the auditors, and the finance people in terms of making the decisions, changing uh, the discussion, and also understanding the investment and uh, the investment climate in the Caribbean region.